Hello, so today we are going to be looking at the Digico SD9 and how to optimise it for the application of monitors. The majority of the SD9's physical interface is divided up into two sections. The main section being the touchscreen, which whilst in the show file presents you with the channel strip and that's where you can manipulate it and then you have a master screen button that you can press which takes you into the deeper settings within the desk where you can set your inputs and your outputs and your effects and your graphic EQs etc and then the second part is the fader banks so the SD9 is comprised of two banks of 12 faders these are then multiplied by the four layers that they have and the four layers are also customizable, so you can assign the layers to each side in a way that suits your workflow. To the left hand side of the touchscreen, there are seven quick select buttons that let you manipulate the relative part of the channel strip using the rotary at the bottom of the channel strip. So you have to have selected the appropriate channel strip that you want to manipulate, and then choose the quick select button that you want to also manipulate, so say you want to change the pan on that, you select the pan one and then the, the rotary at the bottom becomes the control. So you've got control over your gain, low pass filter, high pass filter, compressor, gate, auxiliaries and pan using those buttons and that quick select system. So this can be quite a good way to get yourself up off the ground and set up quickly. The EQ section of the desk is controlled from the right hand side of the touchscreen. So the touchscreen you can select the uh, EQ for each channel just by pressing it but then you've got these rotaries on the right hand side which then pertain to each section of the EQ and there's buttons to toggle in and out your high pass and low pass filter, change the curve of your high and low EQ sections and to turn the EQ on and off on the channel as well. In this particular session I have allocated the left fader bank to be all of the inputs into the desk. So these three layers here are channels 1 to 12, 13 to 24 and 25 to 36. Now there's the extra layer here that isn't displaying anything because it would be channels 37 to 48 but I've removed it as I'm only going up to 32 in my channel count so it's unnecessary for me to have it on the desk and I think it's important to do these housekeeping options while setting up so that you don't have it as an option to go into when you're in a show and you don't accidentally end up on that page when you aren't ever going to need to be on it so I think housekeeping in this respect, especially on this desk, is very important because it has so much capability and you can do practically anything that you want to do, but as a result of that you have so many options plastered all over the desk that it can be easy to end up somewhere where you don't want to be, so keeping it as minimal as possible uh, is a key to using this desk efficiently. Then, as well in this session, I've set up the right hand side of the desk to be where I control my control groups and my AUX masters. And as you can see, I've currently got my control groups selected, but I only have seven control groups and 12 faders on the desk. So I've removed the extra control groups from the end of the bank there so that it doesn't confuse the issue and this is just more sculpting of the desk so this is really easy to do um, over above your layers you have a button up here called LCD function once you press that you'll see the LCDs activate and then there is one of the faders we'll say unassigned faders you select that by pressing the silver button beneath it and then it gives you the opportunity to remove those faders from that layer so that's how you can customize it to only display the information that you require so to set up my channels what I've done is um, I've laid them out on the left hand side of 
the desk and then anything that doesn't need an internal balance setting like left and right overheads basically generally they're going to be the same level so there's an option on the desk on the LCD function to gang channels together and then so I'm going to select my inputs of the overheads and then gang them together so that they move collectively like that so that's quite handy with stuff that you don't need to set internal balances for but for example I've got a base DI and a base amp here that um, I want to blend and so if I do that I can set them into a gang separately and you have to if you set up a gang then you come back out and then go back into it and you can set up a second gang that won't incorporate with your first gang but so I've set a blend there and then that gang will maintain that blend as you fade up and down but then if I want to manipulate that blend I'm kind of stuck I'm stuck with that for the show so and a better way to do that is I take them out of the gang and then just include them in their own control group and then I can move them up and down with the control group and then still manipulate the blend and have full control over the level that I'd like. So the way that I've optimised efficiency for setting up a mix upon the SD9 is by using the macro buttons that it has on the left hand side of the console. As you can see here it has eight macro buttons available. In this particular application I've only had to use six uh, so basically the thinking behind it is each button controls sends on faders to my aux master and it also solos the relevant aux master so every time I press that I can then contribute to the auxiliary or the mix that the specific person's going to be hearing on the input channels that I've got on the left hand side of the desk the macro menu is entered through the master screen there's a tab at the top called setup and you click on that and then it's a drop down menu and then within the menu is a macros option so it brings up this section here and as you can see I've already got my six set up here so I'm just going to create a new one just to show you how to do it so it brings up the macro editor then you have to choose what type of macro you'd like what what you'd like it to control so in this part in this section it's going to be aux outputs and then you have to tell it what to do to these aux outputs so with these ones I'm looking for sends on faders and solo so you scroll down this menu and eventually find what you're looking for just sends on faders there and now you can you control which auxiliary you'd like to select by changing toggling the value so that's going to control aux 3, 4, 5, 6, so 7 just say like I wanted to add an extra one on the end of my 6 already and then I need to set how the value changes when pressing the macro so I want to be able to turn it on and off and currently it's just on off let's so change that to on and then toggle which will enable you to button it in and out so that's one thing that that macro is going to do and so then you can insert another command so now it's looking at sends on faders you have to tell it to solo as well as that will enable you to hear the mix that you are, that you are contributing to on the desk um, which is obviously a lot better than mixing blind so it makes these buttons really powerful to do two things at once and then obviously you have to change that value to toggle as well and then make sure that it's also on the same auxiliary otherwise you end up monitoring the wrong auxiliary when you're contributing to a different one and then finally you have to select which macro button you'd like to control this operation so I'm gonna have that as seventh because it's the seventh one in my chain and then you just give it an appropriate name there and then you type it in 
Another consideration when using this macro operation is your solo bus and how it's set up. So when pressing the macro, you're telling it to solo a particular mix. And then because you've got it set up as a toggle, you, a toggle is obviously you have to switch it on and switch it off. So pressing the macro will bring you into the mix uh, and what you're contributing to it and then take it back, take you back out to your channel inputs and it will solo and then unsolo. Whereas if you just press it, it's going to solo and then say you go directly from one mix to another mix. If you don't have the single button engaged on the solo bus that you're using, you will then solo both of the mixes, the one that you've previously selected and the one that you've just selected, as you haven't toggled the first one back off and so you'll be listening to two mixes at the same time which obviously is not what you're going to be want to be doing so ensuring that that single button is selected on the particular solo bus that you're using for that application it enables you to really just focus on what you're trying to achieve and make sure that you don't end up hearing things that you don't want to so that's it the digico sd9 i hope um you can take something from this video and maybe improve your workflow or just your knowledge of the desk. Thank you very much.